What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be showing how you can export and composite with multi-layer OpenEXR sequences so that you can have more complete control in your compositing process. Now, in the last video, we showed how you can recombine all of your different lighting render passes in the compositor to have more control in your compositing process as well. And the advantage to rendering out your projects in multi-EXR sequences is that one image sequence can save all of the passes that you have selected for the project. You can have your diffuse, glossy, transparent transmission, volume data, ambient occlusion, all in one file, and then import that entire image sequence into the compositor of your choice so that you can have all of your passes available to you. Now, a lot of the time when I'm compositing in Blender, I'll just render out one frame of the project and just use the render data from that one frame. However, another advantage to using an actual OpenEXR image sequence is that you can composite with your entire timeline without re-rendering everything. So you're rendering all of your data and you can recomposite at different areas of the timeline with a lot more ease. But anyways, guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is the project file that we're going to use as the example for our uh, tutorial here. I've just 3D tracked this live action shot here and uh, added this uh, 3D castle asset from our City Builder 3D asset based add on. It's the castle large number 11 in your City Builder 3D medieval panel here. But this is a super simple scene. I just added a very basic ground shadow catcher and then the castle, of course. And I have two different view layers. I have the castle view layer where the shadow is as a holdout layer so it won't actually show up in this view layer. And then I also have our castle shadow view layer where the castle is indirect only so that it's only being rendered as a shadow on our ground plane here. But to get started in exporting your multi-layer EXR sequences, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to your view layer properties here for each of your view layers in the scene. And you're just going to want to select the passes that you want included in your multi-layer EXR sequence. So for example, I want to include the combined uh, beauty pass. I may want the Z pass, but probably not. So I'm going to deselect that one. Uh, Mist pass, I'll deselect that one as well since uh, it's not a super complicated shot, obviously. And uh, also I don't want the normal Normal information but I'll just scroll down here and select all the passes that I want I want all the diffuse lighting passes I want all of the glossy lighting passes and the transmission lighting passes as well as an ambient occlusion so select whichever passes you want included in the data in your multi-layer EXR sequence and all of this data will be output when you select that file output so I've chosen the passes that I want for our castle view layer for the shadow view layer I'll do the same thing um, I just want to use the combined uh, beauty pass of our shadow pass I don't want our Z information and uh, I'll also keep our ambient occlusion pass for this layer as well. But uh, that should be pretty good for both of our view layers. Now, the next thing we're going to want to do is obviously go to our uh, output properties tab here and choose all of your render settings. I'm going to render at 1920 by 1080p resolution at 100%. Of course, you can choose whatever render data you'd like other than, of course, your file format here. So to use the multi-layer EXR output, all you have to do is switch the file format to open EXR multi-layer. And now whenever you render your animation, all of those render passes that you have selected for this file will be output in it. And uh, you might think that in the compositing tab here that you have to add, you know, some file outputs, for example, and, uh, you know, connect your different passes to it. But actually, whenever you select the OpenEXR multi-layer in your file format, as I mentioned, all of these passes will be outputted for you in that sequence. And in addition to that, also your composite will be exported in that sequence as well. So you don't need to create any more file outputs for each individual pass. All you have to do is uh, you know make sure that the timeline has the frames that you want output and uh, then click on render and render animation and Blender will go through all of your frames and output that multi-layer EXR data to your file output that you have created here. So obviously you also need to, you know, open up and choose a folder to save this data and label what you want this image sequence labeled. So I've just called it Castle Live Action Multi-Layer Tutorial Render and you can just press accept and then you would just press render and render animation and Blender will go through all of your frames. So that is how you can export your multi-layer EXR data. The next thing I'm going to show you guys is how you can import and and use that image sequence data as well. So this background right here is just a single render that I've done previously. It's just a very basic render layer input. So rather than using this render layer input where we would have to, you know, re-render every frame that we want to composite, we want to use an image sequence here instead. So I've already rendered out my multi-layer EXR sequence prior to this tutorial. So what I'll do to open it is I'll just press shift A and I'm going to go to input and then image. And now I'll just click on open and I've saved my multi-layer EXR sequence in this uh, folder right here. So I'll click on that and then I'm going to select all the frames that I want from the sequence. So I'll select all of them here and click on open image 
And now, as you can see here, we have a label for our sequence here, and um, we can choose a variety of passes that we can use from the sequence. And you might notice that some of the passes that we selected for our main view layer are not showing up here. And that's because the view layer that is selected in this multi-layer EXR file right now is the castle shadow view layer. So as you can see here in this multi-layer EXR sequence, you can choose the different layer outputs that you want to work with. So if I switch this over to castle, you'll notice that all of the different passes that we selected to output are showing up here properly. So now we have this open EXR sequence and we can use all the data from it. And uh, you know, as we go through our timeline here, the data from the sequence will change according to the change in your timeline. So what I'll do here is instead of using our render layers here, I'll delete that and I'll move our open EXR sequence to it. And for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to show you guys how to composite all of these different passes together because I did that in the last one. I'll put a link to that tutorial in the description, but I'll just use our very basic beauty pass with some ambient occlusion. So I'll take our combined beauty pass and put it into our uh, image sequence here. And the reason it went black is because our multiply node that we were using previously for this for our ambient occlusion has the factor still at one. So I'll just bring that back to zero. And uh, now as you can see here, our castle is showing up. It's not composited very well, but you get the general idea. I'll just uh, kind of do some basic compositing on this. I'll take our ambient occlusion pass, put it into the multiply node, increase the factor to one once again. So now we have some ambient occlusion on our castle. So you can kind of see where this is going. You have all of your data from all of the frames that you have rendered in this one sequence here. One thing we also need to do is add our shadow pass in. So I'll just go ahead and press Shift D, duplicate this multi-layer EXR sequence, and I will delete this render layer input that we were using as our castle shadow pass from before. And um, I will switch our view layer over to castle shadow. And our combined uh, beauty pass here is the shadow pass. I'll just put this in our blur node here that we have used for our shadow information and also take this to our alpha over node here. And now as you can see here, we have a nice shadow overlaid in our composite as well. And the cool thing about using image sequences in the Blender compositor or any compositor for that matter is obviously as you kind of scroll through your timeline here, you'll notice that the castle actually moves according to the 3D track that you have rendered it with. So this is really nice when you want a lot more control in your compositing process. I didn't spend a lot of time on this particular scene or composite, but uh, this is just the general idea in using multi-layer EX our sequences. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.